Hey guys, Ashley D. Will here, and today we're talking about slavery. And my question to you is, are you a slave? Or what are you enslaved to? Now, in 2 Peter, he's actually addressing the Gnostic influence that was coming in the church and causing a lot of chaos and leading many believers astray. And so, uh, but in this context, he also presents it in a general way as a, as a general principle. So we can take it um, a little bit out of context because it's a general principle, okay? So I'm not going to go into all the Gnosticism and all that. But um, so the scripture says, this is Second uh, Peter 2.19b, Whatever overcomes a man or a woman, to that he or she is enslaved or brought into slavery. So people are enslaved to whatever defeats them. What defeats you? What can you not stand against? For by what anyone has been subdued, by that also he is enslaved. A person is a slave to whatever he gives into. Now, one little caveat, temptation is not enslavement. If you have succumbed to temptation and let it drag you away from the faith, that's the context that they're talking about here in this uh, chapter. But we can also apply this, like I said before, to everyday life because he presents it in a general context as a principle. So whatever overcomes a man or a woman to that thing or person or situation or idea, he is brought into slavery. Now, what overcomes you? Usually it will fall into the category of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, or the pride of life. You can help discern what it is by looking at those that list there. Human trafficking is a $32 billion industry. And that is physical, sexual slavery. But what about the slavery that is spiritual, emotional, or mental? See, slavery means there is no freedom there. There's no freedom to leave. There's no freedom to say no. There's no freedom to do as you wish. There's no freedom to follow the Holy Spirit. Now, 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That's one of my favorite verses. We could also say, reverse that, and say, Where the Spirit of the Lord is not, there is slavery. Where the Spirit of the Lord is not, there is slavery. So where in your life are you feeling that you're not free? To say no, to leave, to follow the Holy Spirit. Where do you feel where something has dominion over you? It has power over you and you can't say no. The word here overcomes means to make worse, to vanquish, by implication to rate lower, to be inferior, or to overcome. Enslave means being under subjection to bring under bondage, to become a servant of. If you're a servant of somebody, even if your spouse, and you can't say no to that spouse, you are a slave to that spouse. The word slave is a person who is the legal property of another and is forced to obey them. Of course, that's referring to the days of legal slavery. Um... And then it's a person entirely under the domination of some influence or person. It can also mean to work excessively hard. If you're a workaholic, you're a slave to your work. If you're an alcoholic, you're a slave to alcohol. Whatever aholic you are, sexaholic, you're a slave to sex. A shopaholic, a slave to shopping. Whatever the... Um, Thing that dominates you. You're a slave to it. Now, I've mentioned two enslavements. Really, I'd say three, <clears throat> but two. The first one was um, I was enslaved to sugar because I mentioned in the benefits of addiction video that 
I was a slave to sugar because I couldn't say no to it. And the reason I got down to the root and the reason the Lord showed me is because that was my primary attachment was to sugar because I never bonded with my mother. Didn't bond with my dad either. But that's a pretty deep uh, wound there. And that's a pretty deep addiction. Okay, so only the Lord could have showed me, could have shown me how to get out of that. And he did. And I'm out and I'm not going back. Another enslavement I had is being raised in the South, you know, high society, butthead, debutante, all that nonsense. Um, I was uh, trained to please people, trained not to listen to myself, not to listen to my gut. Don't listen to the Holy Spirit, of course. And um, so that led to a lot of problems in my life. And the Lord has brought me out of that, and I'm still sensitive to people's needs. I minister to people. I'm a very kind, loving person, but I don't let anybody ensnare me to their agenda, to their whatever it is. I'm very aware of that. So those were two, the people-pleasing and the sugar uh, enslavements that I was in, and I was partially enslaved to my husband because I was having to work out how our relationship was going to be and I would go too far one way and too far the other way trying to figure out what was normal because my background is not uh, was not that healthy in my opinion so that was a kind of a wrestling match with myself all these years to figure out where the right path is for me and now I know where it is I listen to my feelings I listen to my gut I listen to the Holy Spirit and I'll live with him or without him it doesn't even matter he doesn't matter it, I'm just going to follow what the Holy Spirit tells me to do. Yes, I love him, technically, you know, but, um, you know, we're just where we are. But I'm not enslaved to him anymore, and I'm not enslaved to people-pleasing, and I'm not enslaved to sugar. So with all of those enslavements, I was wanting to suggest that you uh, reflect on and consider what might be your enslavement. Some people have no enslavements. There are very few, but most people have multiple enslavements in this day and age, and a huge majority of men are enslaved to pornography. And this is adultery in the relation, marriage relationship if they're married, and it's a very serious problem. So I just want to I have a great picture here. I'll try to put it under the uh, in the notes box underneath the video. I love it. It's a uh, two feet walking, and then they each have a um, a cuff and a chain with a ball holding hold him. He's trying to go, but he can't go. He can't go forward because he's stuck by something. So, whatever you succumb to or are a slave to is what controls you. Does a person control you? Does a food control you? Does an activity control you? Does the media? control you. That's their goal, you know. They want you to obey that screen. Sitting in your living room, obey that screen in your office, obey that screen in your car, obey that screen. That's the goal. So watch out for that too. So this is just a little question to watch out for. Holy Spirit, please show me any area that I am getting enslaved to or have been enslaved to or am enslaved to. And show me the way out. Jesus Christ is the way out of every situation. He is the way out because he is freedom. And when you ask him to get you out of a situation and you're willing to do what it takes to get out of it, there's a scripture that says um, you'll be free of sin when you're willing to suffer. When you're willing to suffer, you will be free from sin. And so if you're in an enslavement and you really want to get out and you're willing to go through a period of some type of suffering or inconvenience or something that's uncomfortable, uh, then you will be able to get out. If you're afraid of pain or afraid of suffering or afraid of all these things, you're, you're going to have a hard time getting out because anytime anything gets a little uncomfortable, you're going to run back to the the slavery, see? So you have to ask him to, to get you out of it and have him show you the way, but you got to be willing to do what he says. And sometimes if you're not willing, you need to go through more suffering in that school of the Holy Spirit to be able to be motivated to get out.
when he shows you how. Okay? So this is a quick post on slavery, enslavement, and I am always cheering for freedom for everybody, especially for myself. And I hope that you come to a place where you can find freedom, more and more and more freedom in the Lord, because he wants you to be free, because that's why he came and why he died for us, for freedom, freedom from sin. And slavery is a type of sin that we get mixed up with, okay? So I hope something I've said has been helpful, and I hope you'll listen to the Holy Spirit, okay? God bless you.